Hello and very warm welcome from ACC UK team. I'm Diana and I'm the Business Relationships Executive and the Education team. And here with me today is our expert tutor from Kaplan, Belinda, who will be guiding you today and will be giving her best advice for SBR sitting in September. Please give her a warm welcome in the comment box below and I'll be passing microphone to her to introduce herself. Hello everyone, lovely to see you. Um, my name's Belinda. I've been teaching um, ACCA and some other accountancy exams for Kaplan for about 21 years. Um, so hopefully you're in good hands. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to giving you some tips on your exam today. Um, put some comments in the comment thing just to say hello or to let us know how you're doing. Or if you've got any questions as we're going along, we'll man the comments and, and hopefully answer them as we go along. And hello, Diana. Thank you for joining the call, Belinda, today and obviously telling us more about yourself. This is always helps. And and yes, I just like to speak to students. So just to see how you're feeling today. How are you feeling about the exam session coming up? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Because our role today is to make sure you're not and you're felt fully prepared for the exam sessions. And there's still plenty of time to go as well. So before we move to our questions, please do ask us if there is anything you would like us to ask in the comments chat below. Hello, Mark. How are you feeling about SBR? Uh, I've got to tell you, I find SBR my favourite ACCA exam. I find it really exciting. I love it. And, and I'm quite excited about the new question one as well. Hello, Paul. Hi, I've got Paul. Will your name? <laughs> it is. And while we're getting comments, so maybe let's start with the questions so and we can always go back to the chat as well. So there are still 10 days to go till the start of exam week. And I think this final days makes a difference. And it's where so many of our students put in the work that helps them pass. And that's so, so Belinda, so what can our students do to keep them focused and make the best use of the time before now and exam week? Well, I'm going to talk about three things here, which is our favorite thing to do. I'm going to talk about planning, I'm going to talk about practicing, and I'm going to talk about learning from your practicing. So first of all, plan when you're going to study and when you're going to rest, because it's better to know in advance, right, these are the, the, the days I'm going to study, these are the hours I'm going to study, and these are the hours I'm going to take off. So I'm going to have this Friday night off, I'm going to sit and have a movie night with my family, I'm going to have this lunch time off, I'm going to go out with a friend, but I know I'm going to work for these hours. And then if you've got a structured plan in place, you're much more likely to stick to it. And you can see when you're having time off, you don't have to feel guilty because you know that you've got a scheduled time for working coming up. Hello, Alice. Hello, Mohammed. Um, secondly, practice. So you are going to be sitting an exam, which is a computer based exam. And we know the format of the exam. We know you're going to have lots of um, different pages to open to see the information you need. We know that you're going to have the spreadsheet area and the area to, to put your word processing stuff in. So you need to have practiced with all of that. And I 100 percent the best place to practice is the ACCA practice platform. There are past exams on there. There's the specimen exams. If you haven't opened that platform yet, that's what you need to be doing tonight, really. Can I ask anyone who's on here, have you all had a go at an exam on the ACCA practice platform? Have you played around with it a little bit? Maybe answered some questions using the word processor and the spreadsheet? Hands up who has had a go at the ACCA practice platform. And while waiting for some replies, I think Practice Platform is a great resource, again, just to practice your mock exams and just to get comfortable as well, because it's the last thing you want to do at the exam to be stressed about how you use the tools. And I feel it definitely put your mind at ease once it's all been tried before the exam. Yeah, brilliant. Lovely to see a couple of you have been using the practice platform. 100%. You've got two weeks exactly from today until the SBR exam. So wouldn't it be nice if you go in there very familiar. Right, Mohammed, tonight, that's your homework for me. Open it up. Open up any paper, a specimen paper, one of the more recent 
past exam papers and just have a go, have a go at opening all those different windows, at managing the screen, because you're going to have one screen, aren't you, with all those windows on? Yeah, 100%, yep, child 23. And absolutely, it's really helpful to get used to the software because you need familiarity, that's what you want in the exam. Yeah, practice how you're going to, you know, copy and paste, remember, from the uh, exhibits into your answers. You can copy and paste the requirements and use those as headings, how you're going to set things out. And um, so, yeah, definitely practice. And thirdly, when you're practicing a question, it's not done. When you've had a go at a question, you need to learn from that question. So really, the question in your mind should be afterwards. If I got a question very similar to this one on the day, could I do better? What have I learned from this practice? So what extra point could I make? Is there something maybe in the suggested model answer that, that's better than your layout or an extra way of phrasing things? So just learn from every question. And then you'll have your revision notes. So you might have your pocket notes, maybe. You might have um, some written out revision notes in the file. Add to those revision notes. OK, well, here's an extra thing I could say next time I'm talking about the framework for financial reporting. Or here's something I could talk when I'm you know, analysing something from a stakeholder's perspective. Here's a nice ethical point I could make. Um, Sarah, right, we're going to talk about that question one. So, yes, it's a change, isn't it? It's a different thing. It's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely fine. It's it's a, a, some marks in your paper, but um, it's not the entire paper. Most of the paper is the same as before. I think if you just have a, a good go at those two practice questions I'll talk about in a moment that are on the ACCA practice platform, it'll be OK. Yes, and I think before we move to the question number two, let's also mention the Study Hub because Study Hub launched just recently in July and Study Hub also offers support with quizzes to test your knowledge and flashcards that will have memorizing the tricky terminology. And again, and you can just access it through your My ECCA account. It's very, very straightforward, very easy. And yes, yeah, so definitely make sure you use all ACC resources, practice platform, study hub. We have a brilliant YouTube channel as well, full of study resources available to you. And, and yeah, and as already like mentioned about the change and question number one, so let's cover that part, shall we? Uh, so there is a change in the way the students will answer question one and Obviously, a lot of people are worried about that. So let's cover that. So can you explain what the change is and what free bits of advice would you give to students to prepare for and get maximum benefit from the change itself? So question one has always had quite a big groups element in it. It's not entirely a groups question. Usually there's some other parts to question one that aren't just about group accounts, but a large part of it has focused on group accounts. Now, there's just a little change to question one it's still a large part of it will be group accounts but around 10 to 14 marks will be very numerical so in the spreadsheet area they're going to give you some draft accounts they're already in the spreadsheet so all the different lines are already labeled for you it's a set of group accounts it's got you know the groups property plant equipment and goodwill etc etc and you're already given in a nice column all of the numbers in those draft group accounts what they're going to ask you to do is as you're explaining how to account for certain things in the question they're going to ask you to actually put some adjustments into those group accounts so you've got the column with the draft figures in it and then in a separate column if you've just decided that maybe you need to change the goodwill in the group accounts if goodwill needs to go up by 10 million then in the column next to the goodwill figure you'll put in 10 million as the adjustment and if you decide that the group's property, plant and equipment also needs to go up by or needs to go down by 10 million or whatever it is, then, then you'll put 10 million next to PP. If you think it needs to go down, you put minus 10 million. If you think it needs to go up, you'll put 10 million. So every time you're answering another part of the question and suggesting some adjustments to the group accounts in the spreadsheet area, you're actually going to put those adjustments in. Now, a couple of you have already said, I'm a little bit worried about that question one. The best thing you can do is have a go and practice it. Now, I don't know which provider you're with, but it's OK because the ACCA can help you with that. So you need to go onto the practice platform with all the practice exams in and specimen papers one and two 
each of them have been updated now. So they each have a question one in the format that you're going to get it in the exam. So the best thing that you can do is pick up both of those two specimen papers, the new ones that are relevant for this setting, and have a go at both of those question ones. And remember, you're getting marks for each individual adjustment that you do. Now, we know double entries should balance, don't we? So we know that if you're adjusting something by 10 million in one part of the accounts, there should be some kind of equal and opposite adjustment somewhere else. But if you don't know where that goes, put in the adjustments you do know. So remember in the exam, each individual change that you make gets you some marks. So even if your double entry adjustments don't balance or you didn't know where the other side of the double entry went, you're still earning marks for the adjustment that you do put in if that makes sense. So yeah, 100% Sarah, don't worry, have a go at those two question ones. And that's a, a great way of preparing for this question in the exam. Um, can I just go back to another question? A couple of you have said, um, I'm resitting, what massive tips would you give? Um, two big tips for resitters. <laughs> first of all, I don't know what you did the first time round, but this time round, you are focusing on question practice. So you are 100% on the ACCA platform, practicing those past questions, and that is how you're learning. Because in SBR, it's not just about the knowledge at all, is it? It's about applying that knowledge to scenarios and learning how to apply it. My second piece of advice is when you are in the SBR exam, you have three hours and 15 minutes and you have four questions. 30 marks-ish, 20 marks-ish, 25 and 25. You must allocate your time evenly between those questions. The way to pass SBR is to have a go at every single question and give yourself enough time to do it. Because what we hear back a lot from the examiner is people just run out of time and, you know, they get onto the fourth question, they haven't had time to give it a go. So watch your timing and practice questions before you go in is my answer. Oh, that's brilliant, Belinda. I hope you're finding all the session really useful so far. You're making notes and you're memorizing all the good points mentioned and all the advice Belinda just gave you, because I think it is, it is, yeah, it is very useful. And before we move to question number three, which is our last question, and it's basically how can you get yourself prepared night before the exam? Because obviously a lot of students are, are nervous and they're trying to do maybe like last minute studies or last minute recap. So what would be your advice to them night before? So hopefully over the next two weeks, you have planned your study time. And over the next two weeks, you have gently been having a go at questions, learning from your answers. So by the time you're there, by the time you're at the night before the exam, you're doing what us marathon runners like to call tapering. <laughs> you're not going hard guns and working deep into the night. No, what you need now is for your brain to rest a little bit and to be prepared and ready and refreshed for the SBR exam. So my big advice to you the night before is first off, prepare everything that you need for the next day. So know where your exam hall is, know how you're going to travel there, what time you have to leave, are you taking a bus, a train, what times are they? So have a bag ready. So whatever you need to put into your bag to travel to the exam, have that ready, ready to go in the morning. Um, maybe even set out your breakfast or at least have it ready in the fridge if that's your one, you know, have the coffee pot ready for the morning. Um, and also just make sure that you've um, got your exam details ready to go into the exam and, and just, just chill a little bit so you're all ready to go your clothes have you got your clothes nicely folded on the side so you don't even have to think in the morning we'll just put on those clothes lovely ready to go secondly now you're not going to like this it's the night before an exam but the best thing your brain can do is process and refresh so what you really need to do is get a nice early night and a good night's sleep if you can and the nice way to do that is maybe not to go out with your mates and have a nice big lunch at night maybe to have the chamomile tea or a nice little cup of herbal tea or something, um, you know, maybe a little bowl of fruit or something, a nice early night and a good night's sleep. And thirdly, there's an element of trust the night before. You have revised, you have worked hard, you have made your revision notes, you have practice exams. You need to have a bit of trust in that. And I do think that's the third element for exam. You've got your knowledge, you've got your practice, so your exam technique, the third element to passing an exam is actually trust. 
it's actually knowing that you can do it. And I really do think every single one of you can. I think we can all pass the SVR exam if we trust in ourselves and trust to the technique. So the night before, if you want to prepare, what I'm doing for the exam is probably just visualizing it. I'm thinking, okay, three hours, 15 minutes. What's my timing? How am I going to watch my time over the four questions? What's my approach going to be? Not everybody likes to do question one first. Are you going to leave that to second or third? I think pretty much we all love question two, don't we? The ethics, well, okay, maybe I'll start with that. But visualise how you're going to do it. Um, I'm going to come back to Adriel's question earlier. So Adriel, we were talking about question one in the exam. There's going to be a big numerical element. That numerical part of question one is a separate requirement. So probably requirement, you know, one part B or one part C or something will ask you to amend those draft accounts in the spreadsheet. The requirements before that are written requirements. And that is where you're going to be explaining your adjustments. So, you know, one part A might be um, explain um, any, any amendments that need to be made to the goodwill calculation. That's when you're going to type in sentences and explain your numbers and maybe do some calculations. When you're amending the draft accounts, you just need to put the numbers in. So when you're doing those amendments, I, I would suggest a different column for each type of amendment you're doing. So if you're mending goodwill, maybe a column for that. If you're then doing something with groups PP or foreign exchange or something, a separate column for that. So a separate column for each type of amendment, you just need the numbers in the spreadsheet. So you don't have to put narrative in that spreadsheet, just numbers and then a little column heading to say what they are. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you for your wonderful advice. And, and again, I hope you enjoyed the session. So please share with your friends. You can always re-watch the session if you missed any points. And yeah, and I hope you find it very useful and good luck with your SBR exam. Thank you, Diana, and best of luck, everybody. You absolutely can do this. Just trust in the process.